we're going to look at the properties of conjugates, so how we can play with conjugates. The modulus of a complex number must be the same as the modulus of its conjugate, because they will be the same distance from the origin. Remember, one is just a reflection of the other in the axis. The arguments, however, will be opposite to each other. Because of that reflection, one will have a positive theta, the other would have negative theta. Z times Z conjugate. We were saying before that's the sum of two squares, which it is. But now we know about uh, modulus, it's a lot easier just to say, oh, Z times Z conjugate, oh, that's the modulus squared. Uh, I mentioned this before, but the order you do it in doesn't matter. You can take the conjugates first, then add, or add them first, then take the conjugate. Same with multiplication, same with division. The reciprocal, now we've got a neater way of writing it. I can simply say it's the conjugate over the modulus squared. Let's use properties of conjugates to go and solve this problem. I mean, we could do it other ways, but it's actually quite a neat way of doing it just using conjugates. We've been told x plus i, y, is this expression. If I square both sides, I'll get x plus i, y squared is 6 plus 2i, 3 minus i. Now I could expand all that out and create simultaneous equations, it'll take me a while. Or I could play with conjugates. I say, well, the conjugate of the left hand side must equal the conjugate of the right hand side. They're equal things. But when I do division, I could take the conjugate of the top and divided by the conjugate of the bottom. Now I have this expression, x minus i y squared is six minus two i over three plus i. If I multiply these two expressions together, nice, because both of them become difference of two squares. So on the left hand side, I get x squared plus y squared squared. On the right hand side, well, difference of two squares, which is exactly the sum of two squares, so we get 36 plus four on the top of the fraction, nine plus one on the bottom of the fraction, which is four. Well, that's x squared plus y squared squared. Therefore, x squared plus y squared is two. Now in this case, it's not plus or minus two, because we know x squared plus y squared must produce a positive number. X and y were both real. So x squared plus y squared is two, a much, quicker way of doing it than expanding the whole thing out, solving simultaneous equations and trying to come up with our relationship. So just a quick one today.